Hello and welcome to this map overview for Fool's Road. Now Fool's Road is a Russian map that was originally based in Project Reality that was ported over due to it being such a classic map that everybody loved. Now this map is quite small really compared to some of the larger maps we've got with being 3.1 squared and it's full of lush forests, steep embankments and hills and wider open plains for infantry to go on the attack or the defensive so let's jump in and have a look at Fool's Road and have a look at some of the key flag points and I'll give you my thoughts and feelings on this classic map. Welcome to Fool's Road. As we fly southwest across this beautiful luscious forest we come to the fortress which is probably the most iconic aspect of this map. Flat open plains around 360 degrees of this area rise quite steeply up to the top of this embankment and what tends to happen is the infantry really does have a great battle up here. It's very difficult for the larger vehicles such as the BTR to get up here due to the steep embankment and the trees. The map also has these emplacement bunkers throughout the entire area. If you can get infantry into these you really can lock this area down quite easily and vehicles really will have a hard time actually getting anywhere near here and tend to suppress further out into the fields. On the west and the east side of this area there are entrance tunnels and you can actually get a vehicle in here if you're a good enough driver but of course the infantry are going to take you out because it's not the easiest place to reverse out of. There are multiple entrances on this on all sides of this map and it's a great place for the infantry to be able to flank and get up to the top of the peak if the opposite side are not watching their six if they don't lock this down with bunkers sandbags and barbed wire you really are going to have a hard time vehicles tend to get left here at each entrance and this is extremely bad for your team it makes it very easy for the other team to blow your vehicles up and basically get 20 to 30 tickets per vehicle. As we fly southwest now away from the fortress we head up and over to the hilltop encampment. Now this area can be extremely difficult for infantry to attack once the defenders have locked themselves in. It's basically a fortress, really the name should be swapped around. There are two large buildings and a real thick solid wall that basically encompasses 360 of this area. There is a main road that actually comes up into the compound and throughout this area there are lots of small breakages in the wall. Any defenders in here are going to want to patch these walls up with sandbags, barbed wire and anything else you can do to stop them getting in so that you can funnel the infantry into a direction where you can flank and basically set up your own killing zone definitely a difficult one when you're on the attacking side and a great way for the defenders once they're in they can lock this down quite easily with only one access road here you really are going to be vulnerable as a vehicle coming up here from RPGs and things at the top of the hill because the area does really give the infantry a great line of sight pretty much 360 throughout this entire area As we head south we end up at the mine entrance and this is quite a small compact area where again difficult for vehicles to get away if they actually enter this killing zone and a place really where the infantry want to stay indoors. Now if we look at the east and the west there are entrances here for vehicles to come in here especially for the BTR they can zoom in here quickly get rid of the infantry who can then get up onto the roofs to get access to this area and really this is another area where if the infantry play smart they can lock this area down. Infantry have the ability to get up onto the roofs which gives them great access but it is open from all sides. Now down on the south side there are these extremely steep banks and this is where infantry cannot get up or are going to injure themselves getting down so you need to be aware of this when you're attacking and defending this area. over the winding road down to the southwest we come to the final flag on this map this is the railway area and again combat tends to be focused mainly in one or two directions on this map infantry have a great ability to be able to get into multi-level combat here and hide in the mine shafts in the areas and the top of this warehouse giving great coverage pretty much 
covering the entire entrance to this whole area. Now, it's very rare on this map for the infantry to actually approach from the west, so this is something to think about. Notice in a lot of maps, they always tend to attack from the main road. Remember, this is a game about flanking and outmaneuvering the enemy, so think smart. You could possibly block off the main entrance, as you can see on screen, with bunkers, possibly some dushkas, 50 cal, sandbags, anything you can do to stop vehicles entering this area, because they really can mess your day up if you're not in cover within this area. As with all things in squad, nothing is set in stone, no tactic will work on every single map, on every single game. Every squad leader approaches each flag and tactic completely differently. Some will prefer to line up killing zones, others will prefer to put emplacements down and sandbags, etc, etc. That's why we love squad and that's why every game is different so only go by this guide as a little bit of an interest as an overview of a map i hope you've enjoyed this video let me know if there's anything i can do to improve these videos it's, as i mentioned it's hard to come up with a, a, a tactical information video because everybody plays differently anyway i've been para plays and i hope you've enjoyed this video more overviews of different maps tactics weapons and all sorts coming soon from the entire squadiverse thanks for watching i shall see you on the battlefield real soon